It's the biggest question, isn't it? You know, our societal, collective, global disconnect to the billions of animals of almost every species that are trapped within this pervasive system. Everything that's born wants to live if it's given half a chance. Hi Matthew, it's Sue from the Wildlife Centre uh, from Bait York and Raccoon. It was actually all a big accident. My husband and I came here, we had a small hobby farm. We had horses, sheep, goats. I was a spinner and a weaver, so I raised my own fibre, sheared my own sheep. And um, the Humane Society called me one day and asked me if I would foster some orphan raccoons for them. Um, they had a lady that had uh, fostered some the year before, but her dog had killed them all, so they didn't want to go that route again. So I said yes, it sounded like an interesting thing to do, so I, um, I, I took those seven raccoons. The next year there were 15, and the year after that 35. So my husband started building cages in the area that we call Down Back now. And, um, as fast as he built the cages, we seemed to expand and get more and more. And then people started coming down my driveway carrying squirrels and skunks, and uh, there was nowhere else for them to take them. Why is it that we have this disconnect? Um, I think it's convenient. I think that it's so built in, animals are so built into the system um, that to, to unmantle that, unravel that is revolutionary and monumental. And a lot of people, I would say most people, uh, don't like the idea of revolution. They like the idea of what tiny step can I personally make to make a difference because most people would say that they love animals um, and that they don't want to harm them. I think there's a need and when people find an animal that's orphaned or injured they bond with it and if you can support that bond between wildlife and humans we're getting so removed from wildlife in our lives um, the people that live in cities don't even know what uh, birds are. They phone me and they say they've got a pigeon and it could be absolutely anything when we get there. Um, I think we need to encourage that interaction between wildlife and people. And uh, people bond with their animals when they find them and, and especially if they've injured them themselves, there's a lot of guilt there. Um, I just think it's payback time for destroying the planet. And when we humans have wiped ourselves off the face of the earth, which we're going to do, the animals will take over, just like they did at Chernobyl. All the wildlife have come back there, and uh, it's a different world now. call from um, somebody. Um, the police gave them our number. They've been driving on the 401, I believe in the Whitby area, and they found a little pig just standing at the side of the road. 
So they turned around and drove back and um, picked her up and put her in the car. And she had, a, she was bleeding from the mouth. Um, she was a, very shaken up. She had a bruise on her face and one on her forehead. Uh, so they, the, they brought her in here. We take farm animals as well as, as you know, we take farm animals as well as wildlife, if we can help out. And uh, anyway, um, she came in and uh, she was still, we'd put some food in front of her, but she wouldn't eat. And then we realized that she was still a bottle baby. So we got a bottle and started feeding her and um, gave her medication for pain and looked after her for a couple of weeks. But I've already got one very large pig here and he's enough trouble. So I decided that uh, I'd have to try and find a home for her. One of my friends who lives in Whitby, Oshawa area is on the board, uh, was on the board of the Wishing Well Sanctuary uh, in Bradford. So um, she said, I'll call them and see if we can get the piggy in there. If she, if she can get in there, she'll have a really good life. effort because uh, she came from quite a distance so we had people transporting her from one place to another and then um, of course they asked us first I mean we were contacted and could we take another little pig at that time we had just had Yoda had just arrived shortly before then and he also had fallen off a truck and he was the only little piglet that we had we have some very large pigs <laughs> as, as you know and um, we thought that it would be good for him to have some company to grow up with another little piglet, so we said absolutely, so we were just delighted. and She's just a real sweetheart. animals. Uh, primarily I knew dogs and uh, I didn't know the word sanctuary but I knew I had a vision that I wanted a, a place where abandoned and abused dogs could go. Uh, as I grew older and I learned more about animals that typically are raised for food, uh, I realized that there are far too few spokespeople you know, working on behalf of farmed animals. Now we say farmed as opposed to farm because farm implies that that's what they are inherently that it's not, that's what we've turned them into. You know, our industrialized society, and we are so far removed, we used to all be farmers, you know, most of our families had farmers in them, and, and now, you know, food comes to us wrapped in cellophane, we don't even, you can't even identify the animal. Um, we're used to, you know, getting what we want when we want, satisfying all of our, all of our cravings, and, and I think that's made us lazy, and I think it's made us greedy. Um, but it's just really ingrained at this point. And, uh, and you know, I say we're lazy and greedy. It doesn't mean I hate humans or angry at us. I just think that we need to be re-educated about um, the treatment of animals. People need to know that, you know, if they're eating chicken, these chickens are coming from, you know, mass-produced, mass-producing factory farms where they live, you know, like tens of thousands at a time. It's really, really cruel. I, I hope, my hope is that, you know, if people know and understand that they'll care and that they'll change so that's what my work is it's about creating that change kind of the happy end of animal protection. 
where they come here after they've had such a horrible life, you know, prior to arriving, and then we get to welcome them here. I mean, it's, it's a thrill, of course. Um, you know, the sad, sometimes it's sad because we have to say no. Uh, we're full and we can't take another animal of a certain kind, and we know what the alternative will be. Um, but obviously our priority is the animals that are here. We, we want to make sure that they're comfortable and safe and happy and, and that we can, you know, give them all the love and attention that they deserve. So if we take in too many animals, then we're warehousing them. Unfortunately, you know, no matter how many we took in, there wouldn't be enough space. I mean, there's billions of animals per annum that need rescue. So with that in mind, uh, a critical part of our mandate uh, at, at the Wishing Well Sanctuary is education. And we do a lot of humane education programs with, with youth. And we talk about compassion and empathy and get them thinking about how, how much we are alike the animals. That there's a lot more that we have in common in terms of our needs, our individual personalities, our likes, our dislikes, than, than we have that's different. And then they, of course, spend time with the animals and really make a connection for themselves. And suddenly something shifts in not all kids, but in many of them. And we had a boy who, whose favorite food was bacon when he arrived, but he fell in love with one of our pigs, Wilbur. And he came up to me just at the end of the second day and said, I will never eat another thing from a pig again. So this is where, you know, we're planting seeds. We hope they germinate at some point. Uh, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. We don't know what the ripple effect will be, but I, I believe, obviously, we need people to make a difference for the lives of animals. They can't speak for themselves. They have no choice, they have no voice. It's always highly effective to educate yourself, to know what the truth is. Um, but because the truth of animal industries can be very overwhelming, um, because the realities are huge, um, I think it's important to also know all the good stuff that's going on. You know, the animal sanctuaries and, and all the, the good work that's happening. Um, the hopeful things, I think that's really important. Otherwise you can feel, I think, um, discouraged or overwhelmed. So I think it's important to equip, e equip yourself with both the truth and to know, learn, and get involved with organizations that are on the ground making a difference. Use your skills, whatever they are, to make the world a better place for animals. Uh, I use my skill as a photographer, that's what I enjoy doing and what I'm good at. Um, but you know, I'm not good at leafleting, I'm not good at uh, speaking with people in like a calm manner, it's, you know, it's all, it's, um, other people are good at that, or letter writing, or, um, you know, if you're an academic, there are so many ways of, of educating others, there's just lots you can do. So whatever your skills are, use them to make the world a better place, and also if you're doing what what you're best at, then you'll enjoy doing it. Thank you.